reason to be jolly. Lava. We speak to the believers with good receivers. And the party that's at your convenience. Sadly, this is the last programme in the series, so don't feel guilty about watching TV while all those jobs around the house are mounting up. No, keep watching because we're about to change your life. Yes, It's All Never Work has discovered a revolutionary new way to clean, which means you'll never have to buy another cleaning product again. This book, just out in the States, suggests that you clean your hair with whipped cream, because cream cleans better than shampoo. Now that might sound a trifle crazy, but there are literally hundreds and thousands of applications. The principle is simple. The cleaning agents you get in household cleaners can also be found naturally in food. So why bother wasting money on expensive furniture polish when spam will do just as good a job? Not only is this book the best thing since sliced bread, it suggests using your loaf could be the answer for people troubled with corns. Firstly, if you do have a corn in your foot just now, it will never work extends its sympathy to you because it can be rather painful. But if you cover the afflicted toe with a slice of white bread, dip it in vinegar and leave it overnight, the corn will simply drop off. Magic. Which leaves just one question. What to do with all those leftover corn plasters and cleaning products? No matter how exotic your tastes, it's pretty unlikely you're going to want to put shampoo on your strawberries or cook corn plaster pasta. But if you are looking for meals with a difference, Japan is probably the best place to go. If you're feeling a bit peckish in Japan, then you really are spoiled for choice. There are so many tantalizing tidbits to tempt your taste buds in Tokyo that you could eat in a different restaurant every night for 178 years. But with so much competition around, the bottom line for restaurant owners is getting bums on seats. And some people take that quite literally. Excuse me, just a minute. for novelty toilets, and I'm on a mission to find the lot. The second last stop to the karaoke bar. But don't be over here, too. So far, so good. Oh! <laughs> here we go. What an ingenious distraction for any of those embarrassing moments. The other thing is that now everybody knows I'm in the loo. one's a little bit more tricky. Calls for some undercover work, I think. Hi. Domo, sayonara. This is the place, and I'm fully equipped. But will I get in unnoticed? You've got to be joking. Look at this. Oh, the guy's head spinning around. Somebody's taking pictures of me. And this huge mouse down here is swinging from side to side. A bit difficult to concentrate your in. The search goes on, and it's time to top up. We have music! Oh, look! He's moving towards me! You're invading my personal space! That was terrific! Providing this kind of audio-visual entertainment for customers may be a moving experience they'll never forget, but will it all backfire on the restaurant business? 
I mean, what's the point in sitting out here at your table? What is the place to be? Oh, yeah? <laughs> now, if you find yourself needing to get anywhere in Aspen, Colorado, you could call a yellow cab. But beware, this may look like an ordinary taxi, but hail it and you'll get more than you bargained for. The wildest ride in the history of transportation. Hey, what? Sorry, John? I created a performance of unparalleled sensory overload. Party on, dude. Lasers and fog, fiber optics, neon, smoke and haze. Hey, it's a Pink Floyd concert in a taxi. Come on in. At nightfall, Cabby John ups the voltage even more. It's like a rolling rock concert with uh, nine lasers, high-speed internet, digital camera, digital video, digital drums, digital piano. I mean, it's only like 12 computers in the front seat. It's a nightmare of technological wiring. A cluster of stars have had their lives lit up by this ultimate experience, including Piers Brosnan, Michael Douglas, Clint Eastwood, and the Pope, allegedly. It's just a rock and roll special effects mobile that kind of blurs the distinction between taxis and theater. This advertisement has been classified as you for useless. Here's a young lady out for a breath of fresh air, but these days just a few lungfuls of that city smog can leave you exhausted and fuming. What she needs is the new Shindogu patented fresh air mask. Comfortable and easy to fit, the flexible tube links you to your own personal supply of fresh country air. This environmentally friendly device is the natural solution to air pollution that'll make your friends go green with envy. So don't choke on that smoke, put traffic emissions out of commission with a fresh air mask from Shindoku, the useless invention society. Not available in shops. Well, it may be the last program in the series, but remember, the spirit of Shindogu can live on in you. Simply enter your useless invention into our It'll Never Work Design Awards. The address is coming up at the end of the show. And we'll be announcing the best, or is that the worst, designs during National Science Week in March, where the overall winner can bask in the glory of their very own multimedia PC. And winning an It'll Never Work Design Award certainly opens doors. Just take a look at this. Our winner was lucky enough to meet Her Majesty the Queen when she opened the new BBC Experience exhibition. Richard clearly impressed Her Majesty with the work that has to be put into inventions that don't work. The It'll Never Work Design Awards. First prize, Richard Pilot for the walking suitcase. Penny Lock, we should close the deal by tonight. OK, see you in Paris. Ciao. We execs on the move don't have time to mess around. We've got to keep in touch and at the same time get from A to B as quickly and as smoothly as possible. Thank you, James. I can manage from here. But this is my secret weapon for business travel. The walking suitcase. It's so efficient, I don't have to lift a finger, apart from at the beginning when I have to set it off. With this by my side, people know I mean business. Look, it's off! It's the walking suitcase! Oh, yeah! What are you writing that? It's suitcases have got wheels anyway. Yes, I know that, but suitcases, they, they don't walk, do they? This one walks. Have you seen the feet in this thing? Look, it comes out. Look at the feet. There's not enough room. It's a silly Shut idea, and it goes too slowly. where the walking suitcase really comes into its own because as usual first class it's miles up the train but for me no problem I want you and your case out here now. But you can't do that, I'm just wondering it's a 
And as for you, you'll never walk again. Over 2,000 feet up here on Mount Shirani, it's cold and it stinks. So why do so many of the world's top scientists come here? Well, the answer to that and hopefully many more questions lies down there, 25 metres below that lake, because Kusatsu Shirani is a centre for research into volcanic activity. Most volcanoes occur at points on the globe where the plates which make up the Earth's crust meet. Japan rests on the edge of the Pacific Plate, in a zone of volcanic activity known as the Pacific Ring of Fire. As these plates move, they cause a build-up of pressure under the Earth's crust. When this pressure becomes too great, molten volcanic material called magma is forced to the surface. The result can be an eruption with enough energy to shoot thick columns of ash and dust into the upper stratosphere and send rivers of red-hot lava into the surrounding countryside with devastating effects. Eighty years ago in California, a volcano that hadn't erupted in over 10,000 years suddenly burst into life. So research into predicting where and when volcanic eruptions will occur is vital. Students from all over the world come to the Kusatsu Shirani Observatory to learn more about volcanic behaviour. Video cameras are used to scan the crater lake for signs of activity. Data from thermometers and sensing equipment is collected and analysed. But you can't do everything from the comfort of the observatory, so it's time to get out there and hike up the volcano. This is a fumarole, a place on the volcano where gas escapes. It's mostly water vapour, but it also contains sulphur dioxide, hydrogen sulphide, which is giving it a really bad odour, and some helium, methane and argon. By measuring the gas content from the fumarole, you can assess the stability of the volcano. Most of the recent eruptions have occurred in and around the Ugama Crater Lake, and as small changes in conditions here can be an early warning sign of volcanic activity, it's off to do some water testing. So this is the sensor, mm -hmm. and uh, you can see the pH value. Okay, so a pH of 7 is neutral, so normal water would be 7, wouldn't it? Oh, wow, look at that drop. Very acidic. Testing water temperature. Is that far enough in? 20.9, what is it? 20.9, exactly the same. <laughs> Research like that being done at Kasatsu Shirani is essential if we're going to understand what's happening at the Earth's core. At the moment, everything up here looks fairly peaceful, but volcanoes are so unpredictable that it'd be dangerous to take them for granted. The question isn't, will there be another volcanic eruption? but where and when. Mmm, just the job on a hot summer's day. A lovely cool drink with plenty of ice. But careless consumption of those cooling cubes can cause a quaffing catastrophe. Well, that won't happen to this young lady. She's remembered to bring her Shindogu patented ice guard. Fitted in seconds, this clever device retains the ice and lets you sink your drink without having to think. So, don't let an ice cube make you hot and bothered. Keep your cool with a patented ice guard from Shindoku, the useless invention society. Not available in shops. This series, Jez, Angela and I have been all over the place. Japan, the States, but Adrian, he spent most of his time ferreting through thousands of dusty patents. No wonder the poor guy looks so pale. But you know, he is dedicated to the field test, to finding those brilliant ideas that nobody else had the gumption to take seriously. So let's travel back in time to the year 1921. Yes, and what a fab year 1921 was. Making it better, the sticking plaster was born. So was the lie detector. Honest. 1921 saw the first helicopter flight, and good old Stanley Walensky patented the man-catching tank. Now, believe it or not, the man-catching tank was devised 
for the use in banks for the capture and holding of burglars and the like. Unlikely idea, or a flash of inspiration. We weren't too sure, so we put it to the Never Work field test. <laughs> response there, the 20s, best remembered for the Great Depression, especially if you're the inventor of the man-catching tank. Now, everyone knows the moon isn't made of cheese, but whatever it is made of, it's so... Hmm. A chunk this big could cost you a million pounds, but don't despair because a company on the internet will now sell you a 1,700-acre plot actually on the moon a tenner. You even get a lovely certificate. Plot, but with a million to go, that's 30 million. So it's official, the moon is made of. But be aware, if we're doing it, it be space estate agents on other planets. Dream home could be owned by Landawi from the planet Zog. The Statue of Liberty, the gateway to the new world. For years, the USA has been a favorite destination for visitors from all over our planet. And if you believe the rumors, from a few, from a few other planets too. Amongst many stories, there are the aliens who are supposed to have crashed near Roswell Airfield, New Mexico. And what goes on in the top secret military base, Area 51? Are they really studying spacecraft that have traveled here from other parts of the galaxy? Now, you might question whether if intelligent beings were going to travel millions of miles to visit us, then their first stop would be to the place that gave us Dolly Parton, Hot Dogs and Baywatch. In the 1960s, Dr. Frank Drake came up with this equation. It was an attempt to work out the number of alien civilizations out there that might be trying to get in touch with us. But trust me, this equation has convinced quite a few scientists that ET could be for real. Since the 70s, spacecraft have been launched carrying pictures and sounds which would tell any alien who cared to take a look what our world is like. In 1992, NASA started the multi-million dollar SETI program, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, in the hope of picking up messages beamed to us from other worlds. A year later, the money ran out and they stopped listening. So, I guess that means unless ET can tap into the BBC's transmitters, we won't know he's out there. Well, no, because now there's another way. This may look like just another suburban street, but Williamsport is the home to Paul Shuck, long-time professor of electronics and the man they now know as Dr. Seti. So, Paul, you are Dr. Seti, the man who runs the Seti League. What are you hoping to achieve? We seek to answer a fundamental question which has haunted humankind since first we realized that the points of light in the night sky are other suns. Are we alone? What makes you think that you can succeed where NASA, spending millions of dollars, gave up? We hope to make up in strength of numbers what we lack in sophisticated equipment. The SETI League seeks to involve thousands of enthusiasts all around the world in a coordinated search to cover the whole sky. 
This parabolic dish is a small test system. Our actual antennas are somewhat larger, but they do much the same thing. Signals from space falling on the surface of the dish, focused into the tin, and then following the coaxial cable here down into the laboratory where they're processed by a receiver. Let me show you that. Let's go and see if E.T.'s phoning your home. Welcome to the SETI lab. Any coolers, Paul? Well, let's find out. Here's the cable that was attached to the antenna. Let's turn the whole thing on and see if anyone's calling. Ooh, well, that doesn't sound or look very interesting. No, all we have here is background noise. It appears that E.T. is not calling today. So how would you know if an alien was calling you from outer space? Ah, to show you that, we need E.T. in a tin. This is a test signal generator. It produces the sorts of signals which I imagine other civilizations might radiate. Here's the on-off switch. If you care to take it out to the antenna and turn it on, we can test the system. All right, I'll do my best alien impression. Thank you. So, Dr. Seti, are you receiving me? Indeed, I am. As you hear and see, we have a signal here quite different from the background noise we heard before. OK, so we can hear and see this artificial signal, but we've never received anything like this from an alien, have we? Well, as a matter of fact, we think maybe we have. Let me show you. Here's the most exciting candidate signal ever received out of 40 years of SETI. Hmm, astonishing, Paul. <laughs> well, the astronomer on duty thought so. This is the famous Ohio State WOW signal. So why was he so excited? What does it mean? Well, if we graph the data, we see here a strong signal rising clearly out of the background noise and back down again. The best candidate signal ever received yet for extraterrestrial intelligence. Well, if E.T. does contact us, we should be ready to give him a warm welcome. And they say that music is the universal language. My satellite antenna is pointed at the sky. But I'm not watching television, let me tell you why. I'm searching for existence proof of any alien race by sifting through the microwaves that fall from outer space. I am part of the search that's known as SETI. I'm a believer with a good receiver. There are coherent signals beaming at me. And when I find one, then I'll say, wow. But surely even aliens don't like country and western. Because the Drake equation says that N is roughly L. Well, the SETI League are still recruiting. They want to sign up 5,000 radio amateurs around the world. And the good news is that you don't need to be able to sing. You just need the right equipment. But who knows, E.T. may not be sending us messages, but maybe he's planning to come here in person. And just so that you don't miss him when he does come, a company in the States has come up with this. It's a UFO detector. Beeps, be prepared to be beamed up. All a bit ridiculous? Well, maybe. But if you do get bored of waiting for visitors from other worlds, don't worry, because now you can have your very own UFO. Realistic silver color, remote controlled. It'll fool anyone. Scare your neighbors, terrify your friends. Take a photo, you might even make it onto the front page. And let's face it, this is the closest you're likely to get to a real spaceship. Yeah, it would take thousands of years for an alien to get to us, even travelling at the speed of light. It just ain't gonna happen, is it? Oh. <laughs> 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 